我哋願邀請尚未登機嘅旅客排隊登機，多謝。Hi, I'm Professor Simon Hazlitt from the University of Wales, and I'm sat here in Hong Kong International Airport. And you may be wondering why I want to talk about coastal geography and sea level change at, a, at an airport like this. But this is Hong Kong, and Hong Kong is made up of islands and a narrow strip of um, a Chinese mainland, which has been crammed full of uh, urban development over the last hundred years or more. And because of that, when they wanted to build these big flat uh, expanses of land to put the airport on, for example, they've had to borrow land from the sea and, and uh, reclaim it, uh, infilling, um, uh, the, the, basically infilling the, the, the sea with, with uh, landfill to actually build up these flat surfaces. So what we can see here is actually artificial man-made ground, which is flat enough for the aeroplanes to, to land on. And so these areas, that, in which this airport stands on, and, and there are other examples in Hong Kong, are actually we're part of the sea. And before they built these um, uh, these, these uh, artificial landscapes, we were able scientists were able to core the seabed and actually look at the sediment that was there before they were sort of covered over forever. And one of those particular studies looked at uh, or used a, a number of innovative methods to look at sea level change over the last half a million years in this particular area. Now the colleagues that, are, that did that study were based here at the University of Hong Kong but also colleagues of mine in the University of Wollongong in, uh, in Australia. And the two techniques that they looked at um, were looking at moisture content in a core that was brought up using a borehole, a borehole uh, drilling um, just offshore here. Um, and within that 40 meter long borehole core, they looked at the content um, within the sediment of moisture, but also um, they did a technique uh, called thermoluminescence dating, and I'll explain both of those in a minute. Well, if, first of all, in terms of the moisture content of the sediment, when analyzing the moisture content down the core from the top, which is the seabed, down through the core, 40 meters of sediment, Analyzing the moisture in there, they were able to suggest that sediments that lacked moisture would indicate periods in the past that um, that sediment was uh, desiccated because it was exposed to the air. So it wasn't under the sea, it was exposed to the air. And how would you explain that other than by changes in the sea level? So they identified three different layers in that core at different levels that the, where the sediment was what they call paleo-desiccated, so it's desiccation in the past. And they attributed those particular desiccation events uh, to when sea level was lower. But when, of course, uh, were the sea levels lower? And this is where thermoluminescence dating comes in. It's a dating technique that you can apply to sediments that contain quartz crystals. And it's a really um, interesting technique because it works on the basis that when a quartz crystal, like quartz sand you would find on, on everyday beaches that you might go on holiday to, when a, quartz, a grain of quartz sand is exposed to light, um, it is essentially in terms of age zeroed. So uh, if you have a quartz grain under the sun on a beach today, it, it has a thermoluminescence date of zero because it's a modern age. But if you then bury that uh, quartz grain and cover it, so it's in darkness from that point onwards, it starts to store um, uh, electrons and so on, that radioactive uh, electrons that build up within the quartz. Now, that the amount, so, so the amount of this this energy that's built up in the quartz over time when it's buried, um, if you can measure it, that will give you an indication of how old that sediment is or when it was deposited. And that's exactly what um, scientists at Wollongong did with this, with this core. They dated uh, the core using these thermoluminescence uh, dating techniques. And we were able to, um, they were able to uh, date those desiccation horizons within the core to uh, the last few 
glacial stages of the Ice Age. Now, the Ice Age itself isn't one long cold period. It's made up of cycles of cold and warm periods. The glacial stages are the cold ones when the ice sheets on the continents build up, and then you have a warm phase that follows that, uh, characterized by interglacial uh, environments which are warm and of course those cold to warm cycles have a, um, an effect on sea level because when it's cold water is extracted from the sea and locked up as ice on continents but what then when it warms up in an interglacial phase uh, that the, that ice melts and the water is returned to the sea and sea levels are allowed to rise so we've got the sea going up and down due to these glacial interglacial cycles and so what they found is that the sediment that they, that they found in the core was marine sediment laid down, of course, during interglacial parts of that Ice Age cycle. cycle. But the desiccation occurred at the top of those marine sediments where sea level fell and they, those sediments were able to desiccate during the following glacial period. And so we've got uh, marine sediments from interglacial uh, stages, desiccation horizons, uh, which represent the colder glacial stages when of course sea level would have fallen and these, uh, what was the seabed would have then emerged out of the sea to become dry under um, air conditions like we have today. So that was a fascinating study published in 2002 uh, in the journal Quaternary International, an academic journal, so you can, you can actually go and have a read of it. But it was done here at uh, Hong Kong International Airport, so although it just looks like a runway today, it actually does cover up a scientific um, record of climate change and sea level change right here that affected this area. And of course studies of sea level change in the past are really important today because we're currently uh, worried about climate change due to human influences in the, in the, in the climate system. In particular, the release of uh, greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide. And of course, right at the moment, there's a climate conference going on in Mexico, in Cancun, uh, where governments from around the world are discussing the climate change issue. Now, climate, if it warms up, can raise sea levels. And so understanding how a coastline in the past has responded to sea level change, whether it's gone up and down in relation to cold or warm phases in the climate, is really important in trying to understand how the coastline might develop in the future under, uh, uh, in this case, human-induced climate change. So it's really important to understand that these scientific investigations of past climate and past sea level really do have a relevance to understanding the modern environment and to predicting the future climate, sea level and environment that we live in, particularly in these very densely populated areas such as Hong Kong in Southeast China.